Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember to support, please subscribe. The real cause of death of Edward VI. Now Henry VIII greatly wanted a son and a male heir to continue the Tudor dynasty. We remember Henry for his six wives and the fact that two of these were beheaded at the king's orders. However, Henry's third wife, Jane Seymour, gave the king everything he ever wanted. In 1537, Jane gave birth to a son and Henry was overjoyed with emotion. And there was a great hope for this boy who would continue the Tudor dynasty after the death of Henry. However, the reign was not as successful as was expected and it was rather short-lived with Edward dying at a young age. Today we look at the real cause of death of Edward VI, and to support, please subscribe to our channel. Edward was born on the 12th of October, 1537 at Hampton Court. The news of a male heir and a son was met with great celebration across England, who longed for a male heir. In churches, songs were sung, bonfires were lit, and there was a sense of merriment across the country. His mother, Jane Seymour, initially recovered well from the birth. However, she fell ill on the 23rd of October 1537 and later died from postnatal complications after giving birth. The happiness of Edward's birth was tinted with grief for the woman who had given England their heir. Edward initially was a healthy boy and Henry was incredibly happy with him. He regularly looked after him, playing with him, and Edward grew well and strongly. He was a tall and happy child, and there is a presumption that he was a sickly child. However, this was not the case, especially in his first few years. At the age of four, though, he did suffer from a quatrain fever, or malaria, and this did threaten his life, and he did have rather poor eyesight. But after he recovered, he was relatively healthy until the final months of his life. He was taught in the best education the king could find, and it was said that he was a highly intelligent boy. He often visited his half-sisters, Elizabeth and Mary, and he also became close to Catherine Parr, Henry's sixth wife, and Edward's stepmother. Other children visited Edward to play, but he was more dedicated to his education and schoolwork, and it was said that he was motivated by his duty. However, on the 1st of July 1543, Henry VIII signed the Treaty of Greenwich in an attempt to bring peace with Scotland, and this was sealed with the betrothal of Edward the heir of England to the then seven-month-old Mary, Queen of Scots. The Scots refused this agreement and allied themselves with France, and Henry was angered, and he ordered Edward's uncle to invade Scotland, burn Edinburgh, and sack the country with much brutality and terror. Edward Seymour, who was ordered to do this, launched a horrific campaign, and this became known as the Rough Wooing. On the 10th of January 1547, Edward wrote to his father and stepmother, Catherine Parr, to thank them for the New Year's gifts. However, within three weeks, Henry VIII, his father, had died. Henry's physical health declined massively, and at the Palace of Whitehall he passed away. Edward, being just nine, was then crowned at Westminster Abbey and he was appointed a council of regency to help him govern and rule until he was old enough to do so. Sixteen executors were appointed to help and it was led by Edward Seymour, who later became the Lord Protector to the realm. Edward's reign itself was mostly dominated by religious change, with the fact that he continued and advanced the English Reformation, pushing forwards with more intense reforms to the church. It was during his reign that the church's property was continued to be confiscated, and by the end of his reign, the church had been reduced to financial ruin. Now, Edward was given the best food in the kingdom, and his health was closely monitored by the best physicians England had. They constantly checked his temperature and worried about his meals, and he was described as well-fed and remarkably tall for his age. The imperial ambassador once wrote to Edward's posture that his right shoulder was lower than his left, and he may possibly have had scoliosis of the spine, possibly passed through his maternal uncle, Edward Seymour. At some point around the year of 1550, Edward became bedridden with a mysterious illness and all of those around him did not expect him to pull through, and the doctors had even given up. The news of this was kept a secret, however, within a few weeks, he had recovered. 
In the spring of 1552, the king also contracted another illness, which was incredibly deadly. He had measles and a bout of smallpox, and despite this being a brief bout of illness, he did fully recover. Later that year, he met an astrologer, who noted how he was wearing glasses, and also was a little deaf. However, in the December of that year, things began to become much more serious for the king. He exhibited signs of an illness that would eventually kill him. It's possible that he had been exposed to tuberculosis earlier in the year, and the measles infection he had would have suppressed his immune system, allowing him to be greater exposed to any infection. On February the 15th, 1553, it was noted that he became sick with a feverish cold, and Mary, his elder sister, came to visit him during this period. During this meeting, he was bedridden and had a very violent cough. There were rumours at this time that the king had been poisoned with an unknown substance, and there was a great secrecy surrounding his condition. His symptoms were very complicated, and specialists were brought in to consult, and even an unknown mysterious woman said she could cure the king. She was admitted to the king's quarters and administered potions that made things worse, causing Edward's limbs to swell up. By the 17th of March 1553, things were not good. The previously well and strong looking young boy was now reduced to a thin and gaunt bedridden boy, and the doctors thought moving him could make things worse. He did recover slightly in April and was able to take a stroll in the local park, and then, on the 11th of April, he was transferred to Greenwich down the River Thames to recover, wherein was believed the air was cleaner. He was seen in the garden the following day. But day by day, he was getting weaker, with a different colour liquid coming from his cough. It was noticed how greenish yellow or black discharge was coming from his lungs, and sometimes he coughed up blood. Still, though, Edward was expected to make a full recovery according to his advisers, some doctors, however, believed that he was suffering from a tumour in his lungs, which was being irritated by coughing and the high fever. His belly was also very swollen, and his body broke out in sores and ulcers, but doctors were not so hopeful. On the 17th of May, he met with French ambassadors and was very weak and coughy, and at the end of May, he was going severely downhill. His body was swollen, especially his head and feet, and he relied on opiates to send him to sleep. He then altered his succession, stating that after his death, Lady Jane Grey, his first cousin, would succeed him as Queen. This was to avoid his Catholic sister Mary undoing all the work of the Protestant Reformation. On June 10, 1553, Edward was given three days to live by the doctors who believed he would pass away immediately. He was unable to hold anything in his stomach and had a fever that would not pass. On the 15th of June, he was hit with another very severe fever that was incredibly hot, and this occurred again two days later. Edward did not have strength now to hold in his waist, and it was said that when he relieved himself there was a terrible smell. His legs were that swollen that he was forced to stay on his back, and the king had now given up. His body could not perform its normal functions, and his hair and nails were falling out. His last days were incredibly hard and savage, and must have been very, very painful. On the 1st of July, he appeared at a window to a crowd. However, news that the King was gravely sick had travelled around London. Sir Henry Sidney was with him in his last moments. Before he lost the fact he could speak, he prayed to God to deliver England from Catholicism, and wanted his subjects to live and die as Protestants. On the 6th of July 1553, at around 8 or 9 o'clock in the evening, Edward died in the arms of Henry Sidney. His last words were, I am faint, Lord have mercy upon me and take my spirit. There were a number of doctors present, and after Edward's death a surgeon opened his chest and stated that he had died from lung disease, with his lungs having two huge ulcers that had become infected. Much of Edward's symptoms and last moments point to the fact he was suffering and died from tuberculosis. Many historians debate that Edward's cause of death, but most consider that TB was the rightful cause. At the time, ambassadors wrote that he died from consumption, which was considered TB at the time, but some historians believe he died from pulmonary infection or a lung abscess coupled with septicemia. One thing that is certain, 
Edward's suffering and death was a prolonged and painful process. His death was kept a secret for a while. However, what came next was a succession crisis, in which Mary would contest Lady Jane Grey's throne and reign. Edward VI was buried on the 8th of August 1553 in Westminster Abbey in an unmarked grave in the Lady Chapel, next to his grandfather and grandmother, Henry VII and Elizabeth of York. His reign was a very short one, and what came next in England would be Mary I's reign, which was another time of great change and a turbulent one in England's history. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History.